Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, and here we talk about all things Kryptonian, the Supergirl TV series, anything from sci-fi to comics, anything with Superman and Supergirl. The Krypton Report is part of the Southgate Media Group Report plot at gmail.com. Then you can find us at southgatemediagroup.com. Also, you can find me, Tyler, at JTY Patrick on Twitter, as well as my lovely co-host and wife, Jania, at Jania Patrick on iTunes. And we ask that you please leave us a review if you can. Send us any feedback. Let us know how we're doing because we would love to work with you and let us know how we're doing. Now, on with the show. And for those who listen with us on the podcast, we have a special guest. You may know his voice if you... For all the rest of Legends of DC, please welcome Mr. Zachary Hare. Hey, Zach. Hello, geeks of the world. How you doing? <laughs> all right, so we have Superman being exposed to a new kind of kryptonite. Silver? What? Okay, so apparently Superman's a werewolf now. <laughs> so who do you think is going to win, Zach? Supergirl or Superman? Uh, well, hmm, I wonder how they're going to do it. Are they going to do... Like, it'd be interesting she... Out fights him. Ooh, who does he see? Zod. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't recognize the actor right away, though. The actor was actually in Man of Steel. I'd have to. Oh, hmm. I wonder if I can I'm find. In the beginning scene in Man of Steel. Oh, I love Heat Vision. Just. That's so awesome. That that's how they're doing Zod, I guess, is that he sees him as Zod, and not. Wow. Can you imagine filming this scene as actors? You're just walking around, staring at each other intensely. I wonder if they're gonna do the whole. It, it, it's like he's she's gonna reach, you know, reach him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, she, I almost think she should fly him into the sun. Oh, that'd be interesting. Just because the sun's what's going to. Uh, the sun should help cure him from the kryptonite. And it basically is kryptonite poisoning. I mean, this is pretty intense if you think about it for like a book into the series finale. Uh, that, oh, wow. That was awesome. No, he was an episode of Arrow. Zod was an episode of Arrow, too. Cool. That's different. He's actually got a pretty good comic book pedigree too he was uh, in an iron man cartoon episodes of smallville yeah i knew he was in smallville and then i knew he was in man of steel as one of the people on the oil rig man this oh my god he voiced the hulk that's awesome and the I thing love, i love that this episode just picks up right where the other one left off like it's a, like a you know it's almost like a two-parter Gosh, I love that the heat vision's blue. I'll say that every time we do this podcast. Well, it's like it kind of makes you think of gas heat. Yeah, it does. It'd be great if she just outfights him. Like obviously he's stronger, but like just the just use the kryptonite as an excuse. He's not a hundred percent, and she just knocks him out. That would be awesome. I mean, Solomon's sitting here. He's just he's enthralled. By what's going on. That was a cool shot. Wow, yeah. I like that it's how they're doing this, so it's not like just, he's not like under mind control, but he is, and it's not like he went yeah. bad. Actually, they kind of did this in an episode of the Justice League cartoon. Well, I, I mean, forget. You, I forget who did with, it. Are you familiar with uh, the Injustice games at all? Just, well, I haven't played the new ones. Well, like, you know how in the first game, the, the premise was the Joker, oh, yeah, the Joker. had fear talkings and that made Superman thought, think he was fighting Doomsday, but really he was fighting Lois Lane. Oh, you know, they actually did this in um, Old Man Logan, too. They made Wolverine think he was fighting villains. He was actually fighting the X-Men. Yep. Wow. That was an intense punch. I feel like, I feel like they saved their budget for this fight. Yeah, no, but unlike some of the other CW shows, when we say save our budget, it doesn't mean the other episodes look like crap. 
<laughs> yeah. It's just restructuring. Oh, she did. Hey, she, it's like, yes, yeah, they had him. Uh, awesome. They had her out fight him. And that's just the first. That that was only five minutes. That fight was only five minutes. And everybody's going to be wondering what happened to Superman. Well, it's one of the great challenges of the show, but it's one of the things I like about it that I think they've handled good. Because any, I said this about Gotham. I said it's it's been said about the Catwoman. I'm saying it about the possibilities of the Venom movie. When you take a character that's, I mean, Supergirl is her own character, but of course she's connected to Superman. And if they're accepting that it's the same universe, how do you explain Superman's absence? But yeah. but I think they've handled that pretty good. That and this is a great way to handle it. And they handled it good last season finale. Yes. Oh, I agree. I agree. The fact that with this, with Superman being the way it is, Jania, you're in this too. Uh, you know, just like Zach was saying about him being absent, like trying to explain that and not overshadowing Supergirl and giving her her own show. I think they've done a very good job where you're not always like, well, Superman should be here. Why isn't he here? He's doing his own thing. And I like that. I like that they've been able to cross over a little bit and give us just enough without going too far into his story and giving her her own story. See, I feel like the last episode you could have almost said where Superman went off. Though. They did. Did you miss it at the beginning? They did say it. At, yeah, at the very beginning, when they, right when they get into the bar, they say, where's Superman? I haven't been able to find him. Maybe he's on the street fighting somewhere. But I like how both season finales is somewhat of an alien invasion. This one's a little bit bigger. But no, it's funny. Unlike Flash, I don't feel like, oh, God, this again. Yeah, I, I agree. And you know what? I'm really happy with the way they so far are doing Zod. Like, I was kind of worried that, you know, we'll see how this plays out. But I was worried at first, like, they're bringing Zod in. And I'm like, that's kind of not cool because... One, Zod is Superman's villain. And two, the whole Astronon thing was very Zod-like in season one. Yeah, I do agree with that. Uh, I know it's fine. I'm looking at this guy's the actor. He also he voiced, he voiced um, he was in Inuyasha. He voiced Mommy. Nick Fury in a cartoon. Mommy. Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. He was in an episode of The Lone Government. All right. <laughs> and then there's Solomon cheering on Batman. Wrong I think... I think... The biggest thing is, this show wouldn't have worked if they did something stupid like Supergirl defending Metropolis and Superman's out of town or something. You know what I mean? That would, I mean, so many spinoff shows do something stupid like that. They give a, they, they take the hero and give like a bull reason of why the character that, like the character, because Supergirl is her own person, but she is in, in, her, in a way a spinoff character. Yeah. It's very true. Like, you know, before the show launched, we talked about, I wonder how they would handle the Superman issue. And I wondered how they would do it. And we also sat there and we discussed like if they would do like a crisis event, but do it like in reverse where instead of Supergirl dying, they would kill Superman. And then she Which wouldn't be the wor away. worst thing, but I don't know if that would work for us. I mean, well, it could work for a mini series. Yeah. I mean, like if they did like in the, like the crossover event or something like a crisis, I don't know. Hmm. Like, it's still a possibility, I, but I mean... I still don't know how it feels. Oh, good. No, I was going to say, the thing is, they've been building up Clark, and like, there's been great reaction to his version of Superman. Flashback, a memory, a dream, whatever. I'm thinking it's, it's a probably, dream. It's probably, yeah, because she got knocked out. Yeah, okay. Yep. It's kind of like a, a dream fantasy. Hey, look, it's that fortress that anyone can get into. <laughs> Wait, serious, but seriously, how would she just fly her there? Because seriously, anyone can get into the fortress. Well, they have they have her blood, so they can get in. And but I love how she's up, Clark's still out. Oh wait! Oh there he he's moving. Oh now she calls him Cal. I still don't know how I feel about Monel yet. Uh, see, I'm, I'm been very, I like the actor. I like the character. Yeah. I hate that his name is Mono. 
because in the comics it was Superman that gave him that name. It wasn't his birth name. Because L is a Kryptonian name, not a Daxum name. Right, I was thinking about that. I, I looked up Mon L in the beginning and I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, you know what's funny? I'm actually agreeing with um uh with her with the mother because it's like, yeah, you got played really easily. It's like, hi, I'm a random alien. Wanna build stuff? Yeah. Although, at the same time, I'm sympathetic when you're searching for a mentor who's been screwed over by your parents. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's something I think all of us go through. I really like Lena's character. Oh, yeah. I was so. I, if they ever make her a villain, that will ruin the show. I like, again, this is something, you, if the, the, with what they've done with her, it'd be stupid to make her a villain at any point. I love, I love this character dynamic that she has where one second you're not sure, you know, if she's, like, completely good, and the next second she's, like, awesome. So she's got this really cool dynamic. Oh, God, if she goes villain because, like, when she finds out that Kara's Supergirl, I will, oh, God, I'll lose it. That'll be a little cliche, I think. I really hope they don't go that route. Well, again, if it is, that's CW influence. Yeah, true. I mean, if they pulled out and they made Lena go villainous because she finds out the truth about Kara, it would be cliche. The best super, the best reaction I ever saw was in Arrow when, uh, but Thea found out. She's like, oh, this is why you've been lying to me. You've been defending the city. Makes complete sense. Moving on. That was it. Yeah. Silver K. That's like the, the, uh, like the, Was that created just for the show, or is that they an use, actual thing? It's an actual thing. I mean, they use the form of silver kryptonite in Smallville. Okay. In the episode well, where Clark they, was well, they probably have, they've had, by this point, they must have had every color. Like, over the years in comics, like, okay, w what color haven't we used it? This? What does it do? <laughs> Let me think. I, I wonder if they're going to, like, how they going to explain, because, you know, both of them together could beat anybody, really. Oh, I know. They could take on all, I mean, the Daxamites aren't as strong as the Kryptonians. Oh, wait, now we know that Kellogg's is still broken. Oh, oh, you owe me a new robot, even though he probably had AI. Big deal, the robot's dead. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love is they've kind of dropped the whole the thing with um, mon -El, like arguing, like, oh, Krypton has its problems. But yeah, we, Krypton has its problems, and they've made a mistake, but Daxum is just bad, apparently. <laughs> exactly. You know what would be the I had you know what would be cool? A great way to defeat that. Like, it's like uh, he, they bring, like, rebel forces from Daxum to fight. I, I, I want to see Flint to, to Superman. I want to see, I want to see him be, like, the crime fighting <laughs> toy man. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh oh. Like, uh, oh, what, oh, oh, this is the first time Monel met. <laughs> oh, no punching. I know. I was about to say, like, he, he's like, wait a minute. My cousin's dating a Daxamite as they're invading. Yeah, but if one person would be, you know, it's Superman, so he would totally be like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. They could I wonder if send all the Daxamites to the Phantom Zone. I really want him, mon to find out what she really, like, that she was the one that killed her, his, the father. Oh, yeah. I want to see if mon sacrifices himself or something and kills his mom or he goes to the Phantom Zone. Because, I mean, we know about the Phantom Zone projector, which that would make sense. Oh, no, I bet it is trial by combat. Yep. Wow. All she needs is a pair of lead uh, brass lead knuckles. She'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> well, I liked last week. I liked Jimmy slash Guardians um, dust, like lead dust spray. That's what they need. A little bomb just goes off of lead. Too 
to the death. Actually, you know what's funny? That was an episode of Gargoyles. Um, there was a because you know that actually is a mystical thing. Fairies are weak against uh, different mystical creatures, weak against lead. And they actually they did something cool. They made a bell out of they melted on a gun, made a bell, and when it rang, it it hurt the bad guy. That's I think I remember that episode of Gargoyles. Gina, we have the first season. Yeah, we do. I love Gargoyles. Now, for those who are watching live or you're just tuning in, we are speaking with Mr. Zachary Hare of the Flashpoint podcast on the Legends of DC. So you can act, you can check out his commentary more when you download the podcast. Yeah. If you notice that Janie and I are all decked out in our super gear, we have our even our super blankets on our couch here, which we usually have anyways. Oh, you guys should tell me. I do have a answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sayla's got her Supergirl onesie and Solomon has his Superman pajamas on. Yeah. He's just chilling over there in his own seat. He doesn't he's, he's camera shy. Onesie. By the way, can I just say did the, did the Valerian uh commercial just play for you guys? Yes it did. Well I just gotta say this real quick, even though it's nothing to do with Supergirl. I find it hilarious that this this, this I don't know if it's based on anything, but it literally says, Oh, this is the war of a thousand planets and the heroes are all human. It's like, um what? <laughs> Well, it could be one of those things like, you know, in the whole Firefly Serenity thing was they found all these planets, but there was no aliens ever in any of them. No, but if you clearly watch the preview, it shows there are aliens. So. It's true. But everyone that saved through, it's like the, it's like the white savior thing. It's like, oh, everyone's got to be pretty white and human. <laughs> like Super Girl Trooper. Yeah. I bring it all back. <laughs> I don't know, the thing about Monel is this I don't know, the the chauvinistic thing, I just I think that's the one thing they need to handle better. It's like they kinda handled it, but it's more like he just apologized to Supergirl and they move on. Yeah, I, I with Monel's character I think has been in a lot of ways underserviced because he does have super strength and he does have some powers, but he's never really got to use it. Like it doesn't really look like he's doing anything. And I mean, he never got a costume. I mean, he should at least yeah, got some, to make some him one. Suit. It would have been oh, are you nice, dude? You seriously got to look at the IMDb for the guy playing Zod. It's insane. Oh, I will. I will. And I, I mean, I hope. Like, I'm kind of sad if that's all of Zod in one respect because I was kind of digging him. But in another way, I'm glad the way they did it. But it, it builds it up for Zod to come in at some other point, maybe in a Superman sh- episode, like we talked about before. They're doing the DC streaming service that's supposed to launch. Maybe we could get a mini series or something of Superman spun out of this on the streaming service. Or even they could just do one, maybe two episodes. Maybe not. Maybe not as a regular. Either as a regular, or as like what they did with Vixen, do a thing where Supergirl is incapacitated and Superman has to is the main hero, but as it's like self-contained, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I would be happy with that. I mean, I'd be happy if they just did like six or eight episode mini series. They show it during the summer, or they show it like in August and September, building up to the premieres of all the other shows. Something like that would be awesome to see. Because, come on, we need something in the summer. You know, all the shows that are gone on hiatus and they're like, oh, hey, this is, uh, there's nothing. I mean, then they come back and we get more shows with Black Lightning. Dude, I think I got to mention this. One of his IMDb pedigrees, he was Jorg and Von Strangle in the Fairy Odd Parents live action TV movie. Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay, so the man is sweet, so we need more. And I'm, I, and it's it'd be interesting if they have all right. It is another. Usually it comes back after a CW. So if you're joining us back, we're about to get back into the Supergirl season finale. We're watching a preview for Jane the Virgin. Yeah, and I won't even talk about the problems I have with that show. <laughs> <laughs> and here we're back. All right. Unmute. Unmute. Rocks. Hmm. Now we will only can note that this episode is directed by Glenn Winter. 
who has directed all the episodes with Clark Cal in them. He also directed uh, Smallville. It's everyone's fight. I mean, they could have almost done a whole episode of just the two of them fighting. And of course, Martian Manhunter is incapacitated. Yes. Yeah. I'm just glad she's not saying hello, Megan, all the time. Hello, Megan. It'd be funny if she did it one time. Just to like as like a wink at people. Um, I do get a little frustrated because, oh, dang, oh. Well, that would work on me, too. <laughs> no, I can't get... The, the actress who plays uh, Chyler Lay, I can't get over how... Because she was in the um, American TV version of Taxi, which was actually good. I can't get over how different she looks. I did not know that. Yeah, it was a good... I think... And go check it out, people, because it was worth it. Oh, my God. Tell me that doesn't look like a CW promo. <laughs> I just feel like John gets depowered in this show so much. Yeah, well, he's real. It's one of those things. It's like the firestorm effect in Legends. Like, we got someone who's been shown to be almost as strong as Superman, so how can we incapacitate him every week? Yeah, I mean... So... Oh my god, they are doing, like, a promo fight. Look, the newsmen talking about it. I'm just waiting to see his people betting on it, like... Like some just junky bookie people. Are... Oh, you know, it'd be fun to do it with the um. I, I don't know his name, but that low life alien we keep seeing. Oh yeah. And Clark Bar. I love cats. Infatuation <laughs> with Clark. <laughs> <laughs> He does a very good Clark. I like, yeah. And I'm, re- I was, that's another thing I was worried about. I was worried because of the movies. They weren't going to have him in it, but I'm like, I'm glad they just decided to. Cause that, that's all, that is one of the biggest drawbacks of some of the other CW shows that they've let the movies, um, oh God, Clark didn't know about Guardian. I just realized that's probably the first time Clark heard about it. You're right. It was the first time Clark heard about Guardian. He saw his reaction. He's like, wait, what? I've never seen. No, but I'm saying like that's the biggest problem with the CW shows. Um, How many like Star they... Wars references are in CW shows. Like just the Flash and Supergirl alone, just rack up the Star Wars. Oh. That Kara has her hair kind of half down and it's kind of curly, so isn't that part of like the Supergirl look? You know, the, the curly hair, and then every single time you see Kara, you go to time her hair is up. That's yeah. true. Good call, Jania, on the hair. Okay, now this is something I want to I want to talk about. Is that okay? Now, shouldn't all the da- I understand we showed the human resistance, but aren't the Daxums? really strong so they, the humans wouldn't stand a chance? Yeah, they are strong. And I'd, ha- I'd have to look back through everything because they are strong, but they're not as strong as the Kryptonians. They're not as invulnerable as the Kryptonians. Yeah, but I'm talking about versus humans. Right. So, I mean, the humans could stand a chance. That's why I liked... Jeez. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's why I like that Guardian, you know, sprayed him with the lead dust, because then it kind of made sense that he had a fighting chance. That was a cool shot. Yeah. The funny Superman just went, so how's your son? Oh. 
Oh, what's what's in the box? Um, oh, harm was the humans. I even got a call. I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to breathe in lead, but <laughs> would that af would that affect their vision? I wonder, like if there's lead particles all in the air. Oh, but it'll. Oh, look! This is Monel. Oh, oh, oh! I'm telling you, just open the use the Phantom Zone projector. Well, she beats Rhea. She, they won't have to use it. I wonder how they're going to handle this. Yeah, but I, Rhea's <laughs> probably going to pull kryptonite or like have kryptonite or something. Okay. Don't and judge me, but I'm for Supergirl. Don't judge me, but I find this boots made for walking thing really hot. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's oh, funny. They're boots of shit! Oh, oh, oh my god, they're not. Oh my... I'm surprised Linda said yes to that, because I think it's kind of bull. She didn't have them on. Well, it's kind of bull that she's not. I mean, why she isn't Hippolyta, I do not know. I don't either. I wonder if there's a scheduling conflict or something, because that's one of those things that always bugs me. Like Hippolyta in the comic books has dark hair, like in in everything. Like she's supposed to look like Diana, but then they have a blonde. Beer is a politan in the movie, just like Jorel is supposed to look like Kal-El, but they've never cast an actor to be Jorel that looks like Kal-El. What you think? What you think? Christopher Reeve didn't look like Marlon Brando. No, not at all. Oh, uh, especially on Smallville. Small. Oh my God, that was the worst casting for Jorel in season nine. Oh yeah, that was horrible. At least Russell Crowe was okay. Now, no, the I, best one part two, and he looked just like him. <laughs> now, the guy who played Jor-El back in season one, episode one of The Adventures of Superman with George Reeves, he probably is the best looking Jor-El as far as looking like Superman. And I cannot remember his name, and I'm sorry. I like you're going to remember that name. Man, I remember some crazy stuff, trust me. I know that, but... Oh. Do you know that in the the Superman series, when they launched it, they had yet to name Jonathan Martha in the comics, so that in the series, in the one episode that references the Kent, it's when they find him, their names are Eben and Sarah. Eben? Yes. It's the only time that they're ever referenced. This one episode has different names, and then, after, and then in the comics, of course, we started getting more of the Kent's story when they started doing the Superboy series and everything, which was, you know, Superboy Clark as a young child. And that's when we really started uh, to dive into Mar Jonathan and Martha. I almost laugh when I see the original, original comics, the way Krypton looked. Well, in the original comics, I mean, a lot of that stuff got retconned to being Earth 2 stuff because originally the name was Jor L, just the letter L. In Cal L, which was later Superboy Prime, was all Earth Two oh, stuff. Dude, I don't even Golden. try to. Oh, I, I I told you I know some stuff, man. Because originally they tried to make it more that the planet Krypton, everybody was kind of a Superman. Because like in the one of the first panels is a race of Supermen, is what it says. But then later, you know, as it developed more, it became more about Earth made them powerful. And we're back. See, that's, that's a, that's a mon -El thing right there. Like, he did pretty much sacrifice himself in the comic before he was put in the Phantom Zone. 
but he couldn't shoot his mom in the leg or something. <laughs> I know, for real. <laughs> Poor Wayne. Come on, now, you could at least put some cool outfit on. Well, Win was supposed to make it for her. But yeah, wasn't it in the comics where he got his outfit? Like they gave him some kind of a, like a variation on the House of L outfit because yeah. they welcomed him in. Yeah, it, like I have a really cool Secret Origins comic book of Monel that I found at a used bookstore for a dollar. It was. Take a reference? Yes, he did. Good job, Jania. See, she does listen to you once in a while, Tyler. <laughs> My wife is smart. Oh. The the Monel suit is like the reverse. Everything right. that's blue on Superman is red on him, and everything that's red on Superman's blue on the Monel suit. And he has a small House of L patch up in the corner. Yep, I've seen it. So I mean, I, I, remember, I remember when the pictures of him first came out, uh, and there was a picture of him with his cape, and all everyone could talk about was his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Because the guy, obviously, Superman, so he's built, so the costume really hugged it, and everyone's like, look, it's Superman's booty. <laughs> I'm, I am, you know what? I am interested to see who they would cast to be Lois if they did, like, a shot or two of Lois. I mean, I think they should bring her in for at least one episode. I mean, because we've gotten Lex's mom, we've gotten hints, we've seen young Lex. Uh, we got Clark. We've hinted at Mr. White. We've hinted at. Um, yeah, that's Batman. Black outfit. Yeah. We got we got references to Batman. Yeah, we have got Batman references. Solo, who's gonna win, Supergirl or the Lady in Black? Well, did they announce season three yet? Yep. <laughs> then I'm gonna take a guess here. <laughs> I know that's always the problem. Once you get older and you figure out, like, well, she can't die because I got her next season. Well, actually, I, whenever I think about that, I think of um, Tom Baker because uh, when I watched, I watched all the behind the scenes stuff, and he says, "You know, I'm." G-, he says, "You know, I'm going to win every week, but you still tune in to see how." Exactly, and the secondary characters. Oh, here they go! Boom! Actually, commercial. Actually, actually, you know, it'd be good if they if they did one season where. Um, the aliens win at the end of one season, and then the whole next season is re- like rebellion. That would be cool. I mean, just kind of like how I really feel like the Flash, Flashpoint should have been at least two or three episodes at the beginning instead of just one before he tried to change things back. Like, I mean, it would have been interesting to say that this se- if this season would have ended last week, last week's episode, if that had been. The cliffhanger. Exactly. E-I-E-I-O, Solomon. Solomon, who's on your shirt? Who? Yeah. Daddy. Daddy's <laughs> on your shirt? I don't know. I'll take it. Oh, whoa! No, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> your wife is just like, no, no. Well, you know. No, no Mr. Mr. Superman, no, here, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon got out his big Superman toy earlier with running around with it. We went to the park, and he's like getting ready to walk up to the car, and he grabs two toys. He grabs his big Superman action figure and then his 12-inch Superman action figure. I look in the back seat, and he's got Superman fighting Superman. Now, now the trust, to trust, I was at a, I was eating, um, I was going with my mom to an Easter brunch, and I saw this kid uh, had a Power Ranger and a Batman. I almost wanted to walk him and go, no, no, they wouldn't fight. <laughs> now here's the important thing about your son was he born on a Monday uh no wait uh, wait hold on what? what oh please tell me he was was it a Tuesday no he was supposed to on. you're supposed I'm to listen to about the Tuesday I'm pulling up the calendar right now <laughs> what the heck oh you watching um, the smoking commercial the anti-smoking commercial what the what the frick? <laughs> All right, so let's go back in time real quick. 
<laughs> I actually got you checking. <laughs> Holy crap, Jania. What? January 12th, 2015, right? Yeah. That's his birthday, right? Yeah. It was a Monday. No! Oh! Solomon was born on a Monday. A great now, if you, christened him, if you christened him on a Tuesday, we're all set. <laughs> no, because technically the christening type thing happened on a Sunday. Uh -huh. Now, maybe we can do it all in reverse. Hmm. Oh, dear God. Di oh, God. They're bringing back Dynasty. There is no such thing as an original idea. <laughs> it'll, it'll flop. It'll, it, you know, it'll Tyler, I should... Yeah, but I should have you. Um, I want to because we're doing something really cool on one of my podcasts. We're gonna do the like we're gonna do a. Sh actually, I should have some of the Southgate people on. I'm doing a podcast about all the upcoming shows in the fall. That's cool. I just you know what? There's some shows I think it's cool to bring back or reinvent. And uh, yeah, but oh, I could yeah. talk. Well, I could talk to lengths about that. But, uh, but yeah, you know what? They actually could use Super Cool to actually introduce us to the Legion of su Superheroes. Now that would be cool. Um, they, that's what they did in the cartoon. That's how we met them in the Justice League cartoon. There are so many. There are so many things that they could still like. I'm excited for season three just because I feel like when they introduced Superman, they opened up more possibilities that we didn't think was possible. Like you were saying earlier, I I, I don't mind that the DC movies and the DC TV take place different universes. That's fine with me. I like that because I feel like you can do more stories. There's more you can do with. Exactly. Well, don't well, hand how... me a character that I can't use because it's being used in a movie. Now, like I can't get out of suicide. The, like the real squad was supposed to appear in the in Arrow, and they like Harley Quinn technically has a cameo in Arrow. Yes, and they, you know, but you know what the thing is? I think they were. I don't. They might fix it. You know, I mean, they killed off Deadshot and Amanda Waller, which was crazy. Yeah, I think that was just, but uh, that's another thing. But um, okay, one thing that I, I don't want to say, wor I want to say that kind of, I don't want to say worries me about the show, but it's just that one thing they did a couple of times is they literally just took Superman stories and gave it to Supergirl, and I don't know how I felt about that sometimes. Oh, the fight's back. Yeah, I agree. Hold that thought. We'll save that for the next commercial. Yeah. All right, I like the way this is being filmed. Now, now, once again, we were discussing this earlier. Rhea is strong, but she should not be Kryptonian strong. Now, I, I like on this show how they've been able to keep the villains and stuff like that as females without it seeming like they're forcing it. Well, like I said, it, it, it could have been like, a fe like female versions of... They, well, they did a one female version of some of a villain but it wasn't it was it was fine yeah oh oh she che she's cheating that's why they're going to use the weapon oh wow see oh my god she i love how delusional she is it's like oh i'll just I'll destroy the city. They'll follow me after that. No, they'll fight you to the last person, you dummy. Okay, I, if the, okay, Superman, time to fly. Yeah, Superman, time to go uh, kick some Dax and Mike Tush. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, they spoke Martian. That's dope. You know, one thing I've always said, it makes no, it makes no sense that Martians call themselves Martians. Oh, I agree. Unless they retconned it where that's what they named themselves, and whoever named the planet Mars actually was a Martian and knew about it. Ooh. Yeah. What the? What was that? That looked like kryptonite. What does that mean? Does she have kryptonite in her skin? Oh. Oh, yeah, because it does... <laughs> Her oh. planet got like. Oh, that. Oh, her blood is crypt irradiated kryptonite because it, because it, they rained down on Daxum. That's actually really sweet. That would explain why Kara is weaker without even realizing she's weaker fighting her. 
And Monel wouldn't have been exposed. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Solomon. Get out of here. What, <laughs> Wynn? Come on, Wynn. Be a man. Nice. Fine. I was out oh, good because I'm about to yell on this. I was going to yell at the screen. Stop trusting her. See, that's what I'm saying. I like Lena. Like, Lena is intelligent. And she's smart. And like, if they ever did make Lena bad, I hope they at least hold out a season or two and really give her a, a path to darkness type story. She she could work as an anti hero, but not as a straight up villain. Not with. It's again, it's, I've used this argument before. You cannot. Have someone and make them a straight up villain with absolutely no build. Yes. Okay, so apparently he stole those weapons from Stargate. Yeah. We'll just. <laughs> Sorry, nuts. Yeah. Super breath. I love the Super breath. Awesome. Aww. The TV show we don't get to see in the movie. I know. <laughs> Solomon, what are you doing, buddy? That's so awesome. That would, be, that would be funny if they just she just got on the radio and go like, yeah, she cheated. Could you and John c come help me kick her butt? <laughs> I want to see if, like, so what if she encased Rhea in a suit of lead? Yeah, heat vision that thing, son. Uh, did that actually like, just fly? <laughs> no, they can, remember, they can jump. I know they can leave, but it's all... Oh, maybe... Oh, okay. I guess that's believable. Now, does anyone else think that the Guardian's costume looks oh. similar to the Dax in my armors? I was oh, thinking that all the time. That really weird panther. Okay, I like how... <laughs> Superman doesn't kill, but he just threw someone out a window. Wait, so Magan is there? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. She's... Wait, what? Good white Martians besides... Ma now I'm interested. Oh, wow. wow. Good white Martians? Did they do that in the comics? See, now this is an alien invasion that's sweet. I mean, this well, is... uh, did they ever do that in the comic that Magan wasn't the only good white Martian? Because I'm, I, I'm I somewhat familiar with it. But if they did, know. that is that is sweet. I like that a lot. Because I hate the idea of an entire race of evil vil uh, aliens. I really hate that. Yes. If, if all the white Martians were evil, it does kind of really put things down. Oh. She grabbed her fist. Supergirl beating up Lois Lane. I, I will say, I've said it before, but Terry Hatcher is my second favorite Lois Lane. Who's your first? Erica Durant. And Monel is back. Wait a minute. Shouldn't it? Well, I guess he left as the planet was. So yeah, he wouldn't have kryptonite in his blood. Exactly. He he left as it all started. She's got to use it. Monel told her to use it. Solomon can't watch this. He had to run to their side. Oh, there it goes. The device is active. Wouldn't you want to like, put that on the rooftop? The funny thing is, is like this is one of the things I'll nitpick about. Like, obviously they're saying that they're most susceptible to lead, but putting lead in the atmosphere has got to affect the Earth in some level, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, wouldn't it affect the Kryptonian vision? Um, it yeah, would take some time to spread. But you know what? I'm not going to nitpick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Wait, what? 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 The, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wow. I don't remember any mention that that, that would happen. No, because it said it would weaken them, but... Uh, 
to the Phantom Zone. You know what? I don't know about you, but, you know, it's just like you ever set off like a fogger to kill uh, spiders and stuff, you know, like it does take a while for stuff to dissipate in the air. That was really fast. For that small device. Well, that's just a genius. It's true. He is. Yeah, so it's just I'm not completely sad he's leaving. <laughs> Oh, they'll bring him back someday, perhaps. Ray died really quick. Now, I'll, I will give it a little bit. I will say as a little bit that mon is lasting a little bit longer. Because well, they, 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 they kind of... Longer. So, let's see. Yeah, I can buy it. Oh, poor guy. I'm all sad. What if he died right there as he's trying to say goodbye to her? Or like his, or like his foot started to go. He could just live in a bubble. <laughs> I know, I was just thinking that, like, couldn't he, obviously that would kind of suck, but, you know, he could just go into a cell at the DEO or something, you know? I'm glad the ship worked. I know, I was just thinking that. <laughs> okay, so you wanted to go back to that thought. On the, yeah, one, like, the, the, cause they did that, I, I don't know if they did that this season, but in the first season, they had a few episodes that was essentially just Superman's story adapted for Supergirl. Yeah, like the, you know, for the girl who has everything. Yeah, I, I mean, cause, they, yeah. Which, you know what? Some of them I don't mind because, you know, because when we don't have a Superman show, and they're a good story, and they are like relatable, but I, I could, I could handle having a story, you know, converted into a Supergirl. And like I, I've been plugging away for a while now. I want Mongol to show up, and Supergirl's got to take on Mongol. Well, Mongol's even though he's a Superman villain, I can buy him. No, you know, you actually, you know who I want, and he needs to show up eventually in something. Where is Lobo? Lobo would be great for Supergirl. Lobo would be awesome for Supergirl. Of course, he'd be a the very main... toned down Lobo, but hey, it can't. Well, be... maybe not. Maybe not toned down, because they. I've heard that they went. They fixed that problem in the comics by making Lo Lobo a hipster. Uh, I don't. I, you know what? They did the whole weird Lobo, not the real Lobo. Yeah, I heard they oh. fixed it though. You know what? I, I don't... was like, whatever. Yeah, but I think they've branched away with making just Supergirl versus Super, and this is the best of the CW shows. It really is. Yes, oh. I love a commercial with a shark in it. No, I it's agree. It, shark, it is, and I, I mean, we can nitpick, but you know, at the end of the day, we're we're still fans of the show. I, I nitpick right. the Flash sometimes. I'm still a fan, and I'm still glad it's here. I mean. You know, it's just it's just now we're, we live in a time where we have a lot of these shows. I mean, before it was like we were lucky if we got one show, one yeah, show. True. And then, you know, we, we would kind of we'd always give it slack because it's the only one. It's, you know, it's it's just now that we're at a point where we have multiple comic shows. They take it serious. So we expect more out of them. But I'm, well, I get it I'm because I'm a here. fan. I mean, I nip it because I want it to be good. And it, I know it, and this proves that the shows can be. Yes. Oh, we have a it, it, Everybody's, everybody's I remember when, when The Flash first came out, I was saying, this show's, the sh this is making Arrow look bad, but now I'm saying this show is making all the other shows look bad. I mean, it's a task to keep all of them up. There needs to be more, like we said in a, in a Flash, there needs to be more teamwork between the shelves. There need to be like a meeting every week, you know? Oh, 
to say. So, did she? I know Rhea died, but what about all the other Dax? Did they die? A lot of them got back to their ship. And they no, the, I, I, I actually like that they had. I've always, like I've said this a million times. Like I'm, I, I'm glad a lot of shows. Ooh, he's talking about it. What do we choose? That um, a lot of shows showed like that superheroes can't kill, which is complete bull. When you're when you're when you're here who fights villains, I'm not saying they go out set out. They they do what like heroes like these two would do whatever they can. Like she did whatever you can not to kill. But sometimes in self def and that was self defense. You know what I mean? Yes. I love that there's I love I, I that would be one of my favorite parts of the season finale. The good white Martians. I love that so much. It's it is awesome. Okay, so apparently they're together. You know what? Good for him. <laughs> it, it's definitely sweet for him. Just, you know, let's not remember that in Young Justice he'd consider her his niece. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's common on Mars. <laughs> that is true. Me, 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 me. I mean, well, they're talking about it now, and I, again, I really like how they've handled it. Like, the explanation why she didn't know she was gay is completely believable. Yes. It's not like what they did with Sarah in Legends, which was just stupid. Yes, the whole Sarah White Canary with her orientation was just misguided. Right, she, she's just gay, but she didn't realize it. That's fine. I, I'm believing that fully. God, I hope they don't break them up. Okay, that's one because that is one thing about the show. About um, you know, like I hate that so many shows like can't have a serious relationship. Yeah, and I mean that's see, that's the thing is, with with you know with Superman, you have to have Lois, you have to have this that relationship that's strong. And I love their chemistry as sisters is just amazing. Yes, it is. They have great sisterly chemistry. And, you know, the thing is, like you were just saying, like, it's not bad to have a hero. You can have a hero, like, we'll say, Oliver. Oliver can never have a good relationship. That's fine. That's in his character. He has problems. That doesn't mean that every hero, every show... Um, wow, Alex, that was quick. Whoa! Wow. Oh God, they're gonna kill her! <laughs> oh no! Oh. You know what? Tell, tell, tell me I'm wrong. Like, if, if someone's having a baby, someone's getting married, the kid's gonna be aged or something, or like something. I'm like, I hope they. This is a one show where they probably won't. But you, you know why I'm saying it, right? You know I'm saying that, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping they don't. I really hope. Oh God, they should totally do an episode where they have the wedding and something happens right before I do. Totally. <laughs> hey. Uh. Uh. You're. <laughs> keep thinking about the first time I heard that word. It's, it makes me laugh. I heard another show. I like how she got her name right. For Like, it's always fun. So, is Kat coming back? Uh, well, you know what probably happened? She she had a year without a real paycheck, so she's coming back. She's like, you know what? Maybe, that, maybe that pay cut for her to do <laughs> film in Canada isn't that bad. 
I wonder who's going to be the relationship in the next season. You know what? It'll be awesome. Um, if they didn't set one up for her, like you know, they they give her this a season to deal with herself and let mm. her develop. Cause, I mean, think about in the first season, like she dated Adam. She had this kind of thing with Jimmy. God. Um, they they uh, they. Ugh. So I mean, and then you know, so and then they had the win liked her. Like they had that going on. Then this season was the fade out of Jimmy. And, um, what do you call it? They they put Monel in, so it what you wouldn't have to have. So we're Snapper in this episode. I know, right? It'd be funny if if he reacts to Cat being back. He just goes, "Oh crap!" <laughs> yeah. Oh, they touch on. Uh, you will. Uh, you will soar. Uh, uh. I wonder if they're gonna. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did the thing where, she, like, Cat knew the whole time. She just, just pretended to be fooled that she doesn't know she's Supergirl. Oh, I, I, I believe that. And I, I like that, though. You know, the best how, they, how they always say that Jim Gordon... Ah, 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 ah. Did you see that? Oh, there you go. There you go. See, I, I like that. Because it gives her a sense of security. Okay, can she do this any slower? People are watching. No, I don't want to, I don't want to nitpick here, but I get the costume under your clothes. But where do the boots and the cape come from? In the comics, they used to say that he held, he hid it in the pouch of his cape. I'm like, how does that work? <laughs> All right. So... Oh, you gotta be kidding me! Is he the Phantom Throne? Really? Well, was that the? Isn't I thought that was what that was. I don't know. I mean, that was like that's why I expected him to do was to go into the Phantom Zone because that's how they did it in the comics. I, oh, what's this mean? Thirty-five years. Oh. Oh. Ah. I love that baby cow has the curl. Yeah, I. I he, oh God. You know, I don't know. If, you know, it would be a great Elseworld. I don't know if they ever did it. Like, what if Kara did make it when she was supposed to? Like, she was the elder hero? Yeah. Okay. I, I would actually like to see Wait, that. What? Oh, yeah. Why did the Daxons look diff? Like, really diff? Like, what the hell? Wait, what? Uh, I think we know who the villain's going to be in the next season. I don't know who this is going to be, but. I'm so confused. <laughs> Hold on. For me. It's it. Oh, God. No. No. Please tell me it's not Doomsday. I will freak out. Oh, no explanation. Oh, great. Oh, you dog. I'm gonna find out till next season what that was, you son Ah! Uh, well, that was the finale. And I hope you enjoyed the live chat. We're experimenting with this. Um, poor Jew had to go. The baby needed her. And Solomon. My little super girl. But I was joining my bud Zach here. And so, check out the podcast to hear more of what Zach and I are talking about. And uh, have a good night. So hold on. Hold on a second, Zach. All right, I'm back. So there. Oh. All right, so 
final thoughts? I, well, I like that. I liked it a lot. I mean, I do like my favorite, one of my favorite parts is gotta be the white Mar. I'm like, I love the idea that there are other good white Martians. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. And they handled, I can't believe the Superman fight was only five minutes long. You know what? It was cool, but now, like, see, uh, man. All right. So, what do we think? Doomsday? Like, I don't, I don't want it to be Doomsday. I, think, like, I don't Doomsday. They would, if it was Doomsday, they wouldn't say he will rain. He they wouldn't say it. it would, he said it will yeah, rain. They said it will rain. Doomsday does not rain. He destroys. Remember. Mom? So this is a little bit of a different, and seeing if it was Zod, yeah. well, Superman's uh, already fought Zod. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they would have said he. Well, I guess we have all summer to dig into the comics to figure out what it is. I'm trying to say I'm, I'm, the only thing I can say is Mongol, but Mongols. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Okay. What? No, but they did something where because we know that they kind of do amalgamous characters. Right. Things and change things around. What if they do something where it's a play on Hut L? And that was like a villain in the New 52 who was like a Kryptonian, but he was like destroyed, and I'd have to pull everything back out and review his whole origin. God, what if it's for boy? See, I just, I don't want the villain to be like another Kryptonian. Like, yes, this was Daxamite villains this time. Cool. Got it. But seriously, like, I'd be weird as an Earthling, like, I love you, Superman and Supergirl, but why is everything else about your planet evil? Well, well, the funny thing is Doomsday was a Kryptonian, so... Exactly. But, at, I'm trying final to say... Go, well, final thoughts are, it was, it was a, I thought it was very good, I was pleased with, you know, nothing really I had a problem with, I would say, you know... Good. The fights were good. The story, the way they used the internet, is just like the show has always been. The ensemble cast was great. Fights were good. I thought Rhea died a little quickly, but other than that, I and the relationships. This show is the. I think it's one of the better superhero shows on TV right now. And I agree. I do think that Rhea died a little too quickly. Um, I think they could have done something where maybe she was trying to get free before, and she like did kind of the, I'm running or escaping and I crumble to dust. Not, I don't know. Or she crumbled to keep fighting. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I'm, what I'm thinking of. Like, I don't know. I, well, I thought the two things that, well, one thing I thought of was Hellboy and then the Gold Army. Another thing I thought of yeah, was actually what I was when, doing, of. when she's doing the big projection thing, it made me think of Monsters vs. Aliens. Like, I right, come in peace. By the way, you're all going to die. <laughs> so, but no, I'm going to ponder this and then, we might have to do another uh, episode of just thought. Well, one thing is, we don't know if he's, it'd be real interesting if he's not a villain, like, because, you know, they, obviously he's got, whoever that is, got sent as a child, so, may, I mean, who, like, who's raising him? Or if it is a him, or whatever it is. Hmm. Hmm. What are your thoughts, dear listeners? Send us a message on our Twitter, on our Facebook, and if you can, uh, Zach, where can people reach you if they want to shoot you a, a message? Uh, just search for either Zachary Hare or the Inch from Insanity brand. I'll be because there's a lot of things coming up in both. Can't wait. All right. Well, thanks, Zach. And remember, look up in the sky. Up, up, and away. All right, man. Thanks. So, but seriously, who is that? I don't know. I'm gonna pill out some of my stuff because, like I said, like I have a feeling that it's gonna end up being maybe. A character, you know, that's well, there, like based there on is a character. one character. There is one character that the words "he it will rain" would fit. Besides Mongol, although I don't know if they do, Dark Side, but yeah, like, but the, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I see. I, I'm not. I know a lot of DC villains, but I just can't think. Who, I, I should just you know what I, I might just type it in Superman's Rogues Gallery because it's going to be probably someone from that. Gotta be on Wikipedia. I'm gonna look it up. 
But what have you thought of this uh, season so far? Well, the big thing I was worried about, without a doubt, is, and I said this on the other podcast too, is that when it moved from the CBS to CW, I was so worried. Yeah. I mean, seriously, CW, these show, we, we've talked, this is why we're not doing the other shows in the fall, but the CW has a, the, these shows are just getting worse and worse. And the CW's track record with women, oh, I was so worried. But, luckily the show, I don't think it changed. I haven't seen an iota of change from going from one network to the other. Yeah, I mean, as far as like, I mean, they retooled the format a little bit. You know, with some characters departing, some, um, you know, staying, changing. But for the most part, it still feels like the second season. It's just, you I, know, thought was, I think it was a weird choice that Cat left. Yeah, and I mean, that goes that goes back to she didn't want to be in Canada. Um, so, you know, she just didn't want to move out there for the shooting time. So that that's why she left the show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that was one of the things. The production moved to Canada, and there was pay renegotiations and everything, you know, because of uh, the amounts. So that was one of the reasons. Yeah, she has so much else on her plate. <laughs> yeah. The, city the, the, stuff. the thing about this show, like, the, I think the thing, one of the things I like the most about this is, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the doing the, the relationship between, you know, Maggie and the and the sister because I was I was so because when I because you know so so many things I, I start I mean they have they've had gay characters before the nineties but the nineties just got it just got worse and worse it was just it was dumb the thing about it is they're just two people in a relationship the I mean obviously there's aspects because they're gay. but I, I liked how they they dealt with it I I believe their relationship like. Except for like a couple of things, you could take all their problems and it, it'd be like, and change the gender, same, same thing. It would be no different, which is how I think it should be. So, as some of you may have noticed, when we were doing the live feed, Junia had to take care of Sayla and then it powered out on us. So she didn't get to finish the episode, but she just finished it. So we're going to talk with Junia here about the episode. Junia, thoughts? Go. Final thoughts? Yeah. Oh my. Okay. So I definitely feel like there's some plot holes here uh, at the end with uh, the whole mono and the lead thing. Um, don't you think the DEO would have a mask of some sort? You know, I don't know, something like the old smoke masks from, you know, way back when we used to have bombs dropped on us and stuff like that. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, guys. Like, seriously, why did they not have something like that for Monel? Um, maybe they're just not as brilliant as I am, apparently. Um, joking. And then, um, what was the other thing I was thinking about? Yeah. Why there are also places of containment within the DEO. Why was that not used? Yeah, so, like, there's a bunch of these containment areas in the DEO. Why didn't they put Monel in something like that? They have certain ones that are, are made and designed to, you know, contain diseases and stuff like that. So why in the world couldn't they contain Monel in something like that? Just, just to make sure that the guy didn't die, you know? Um... I get that Monel wanted to be there with Supergirl at the end and whatever. He's trying to be really heroic. But um but she could have hit that button from anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, so why couldn't she fly him back to the DEO, throw him in a containment, you know, um yeah. Cell and like I mean, it's a good thought. I mean the problem is quality of life, I guess, like how how great would his life have been? No, he wouldn't live in the containment cell. My whole point is, like, she could have momentarily put him in that cell just to diminish the amount of time that he would be exposed, exposed to the lead. 
That way she'd come up with a plan to get him off the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he could actually go and live a life somewhere else. Just thoughts that I have here. Okay, people? Um, in the end, you know, she, she puts him in her pod, which is great. You know, it's, it's a good thought. But, um, I just kind of think to myself, I, anybody out there who has a significant other that they really, really care about, and, uh, hopefully you all care about your significant others, um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm really close to Tyler here, guys. He's my, he's my best friend, and he's my hubby. I'm gonna get a little emotional here for just a second. If I were posed with the same situation, I'd like to think that I would be as strong as she could be and, like, send Tyler off to another planet to live his life, um, but I could never do that I mean, in a million years. Look what Clark said. He said he don't think he could have done it if it was Lois. No, it's... And that Supergirl, was, she was stronger than him. Yeah. That would completely rip my heart out. I, there was absolutely no way. I'm that selfish. So, sorry, planet Earth, you're screwed if I'm your Supergirl. Just saying. Um, so anyway, final thoughts on the rest of the show. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, one of the cool aspects for me was, uh, the fact that Rhea had the kryptonite in her system that, in her bloodstream or whatever, loved it. Radiated kryptonite. That was really, really cool. Um, yeah, because you kind of, you were kind of thinking, I was at least, um, how in the world was Rhea going to one-up Supergirl? Because you always have to, if you're going to do a fight like this, you have to have some, something to outweigh the power that Supergirl has. Something that is going to be like this, um, this barrier that she has to break through. And with this, it was the, the kryptonite in the bloodstream with Rhea because, I mean, let's face it, we, we talked about it during the podcast. Daxmites are not as strong as Kryptonians. Um, they, they can't fly like Kryptonians can. They don't have half the powers that the Kryptonians have, right? So, you know, what's Rhea going to have that's going to uh, intimidate uh, Supergirl? And even then, she was still boss, and she kicked butt, so... It was a really good episode. I there were a lot of things that I really liked about it. I could keep going on and on and on. So, <clears throat> with that being said, with that being said, what do you think about that little tease ending? Because I I was at first I'm like, okay, so they're kind of leaving us in an interesting spot. You know, it's not, you know, a, a cliffhanger. But then they give us that little thing at the end. What, what do you think about that? Could it be Doomsday? That, it, it could be. That was my first thought, actually. I'll be honest with you. When, um, they were, she was basically feeding whatever was in the pod. No, I said it, Crypt remember? Kryptonian blood. Right, and she didn't say he or she. Right. Said it. It. So we know that it's not just, you know, a person. It's going to be some kind of horrific monster, most likely. Where in the heck would Doomsday be hiding on planet Earth? That's what I've got to say. Well, I mean, think about the way they did Doomsday in Smallville. We, we both were a fan of, like, Sam Witwer's acting when he played Doomsday. Oh, Blue, yeah, yeah, he was you know, great. And the way they did that story. So, um... It could be something like that. Yeah. Um, In that case, I could get behind it. You know? Kind of like a um, an amalgam of a monster and a Kryptonian creating Doomsday, but it looks more like humanoid. Like, that would be, that would be cool. So, I, like, you know, I, I pointed out when we were talking, I was talking with Zach with the fact that <laughs> The shows have been known to do amalgamized characters, pe take pieces from this person and this person, and make something new. So I, I am very interested to see 
what it is that we're going to get and be exposed to. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how I feel, and we've kind of talked about this before, I don't know how I feel about Doomsday coming in to the picture it being solely a Supergirl villain. I feel like if Doom Doomsday does come into the picture, it would only be right to bring Superman in on those episodes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't want it to be Doomsday. Yeah, I'd like it to be something else. I would like it to be something else. Even if it's something new made up for the show. Yeah. Would be fine with me. Uh, it I'd, might be refreshing, honestly. It would be refreshing. It wouldn't be Supergirl taking a Superman story. Mm -hmm. And also, it wouldn't be... Um, I don't know. I, th I think a lot of people have a better taste for Doomsday after BBS. Really? Why do you think that? I just think that some people weren't happy with the interpretation. Or He's one of those characters. He's not like a, a villain... Where, because he's so powerful and prominent, he's not like a Green Goblin, or a Joker, or Lex Luthor. Where, with each iteration of the character, when you reboot, you kind of reboot those villains as well. With, with Doomsday, I think he's kind of like a, you do it, and then it either works out or it doesn't, and then you have to wait a while to do it again. Yeah. I gotcha. So, those are my final thoughts. It was a really good episode for a season finale. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it, you know, obviously made me depressed at the end, but I knew, and I'm sure everyone else did, that Monel wasn't going to last. As we know, in these superhero shows, they're constantly getting rid of significant others of your your main hero okay and the reason why they do that is because they want to keep us interested uh, that's at least my theory they want to keep bringing in new people as love interests because there's so many of us out there who likes the uh, romance element in these shows um, there are some that don't <laughs> probably like my mom <laughs> yeah um, but there are a lot what, of people that do so what she thinks about Iris yeah, I don't know. That's a good one. But yeah, so that's my thought. I, I kind of felt like Mono was getting, he was on his way out anyway. Um, which makes me sad because I liked the character. What do you think happened to him at the end? Um, Did somebody maybe, because we didn't see how far he went. Did somebody maybe open the Phantom Zone projector and he was sucked in? And Caro is going to open it one day and find Monel there? Or did just a black hole appear magically in the middle of space and suck him in? Because it, it looked like he was caught off guard. You know, it's not like he opened a portal to jump through or something. He looked like he was genuinely caught off guard. Yeah, he did. He did look like he was caught off guard. I have no idea, to be honest with you. It looked just like a black hole. I don't think it was the Phantom Zone. To be honest. No. But I could be wrong. The thing is, we don't know what... We know, I feel like I have an idea of what their version of the Phantom Zone projector like might look like. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's very intriguing. Um, I like being intrigued. I don't like when it ends and I'm like, oh, I know what's going to be. I like guessing. It's really nice, actually. It's kind of, um, you know, like a... A surprise for us because we always know for the most part what's going to be coming up you know um, so this is really like cleansing to have something different I mean we could guess at what it is but we Which is part of we're the not fun. 100% sure you know and that's part of the fun yes it is so that's what we we'll speculating on all summer long yeah I'm already working on some theories here so, Kryptonians, we're, we're going to have some fun this next season, I'm sure. So excited about season three. Me too. Me too. All right. Anything fun, any more final thoughts for this season in a whole, Jania? This season in a whole. Wow. Um... 
So, I really missed Cat Grant this whole season. I'll be honest with you. I loved the Cat Grant character um, very shortly after she came into the picture. So, not having her around very much bummed me out. But um, she definitely made a comeback there at the end. She she came back on this show and she just dropped the mic, man. So I was really, really happy to see her in the end. Um, Do you think she's going to stay? Because the way she looked like she was setting up shop back in her office. Gosh, I hope so. Her dynamic with Kara and the fact that she's been the one to mentor, mentor her and build her up was... Uh, was wonderful. So, I mean, I get that they wanted to take a little bit of a break from that, but I'm ready for that to come back. Um, we didn't see the a snapper. This is this whole thing is so interesting to me about um, Lena kind of uh, looking to Rhea as a mother figure. You know, that I think that's why she jumped so quickly into that relationship and she jumped so quickly into trusting Rhea was because she's so badly wanted someone to look up to. Um, you know, I almost wonder if that's kind of, that might be the situation with Kara and Kat sometimes because, let's face it, Kara's mom's not around very often or her adopted mother. You know what I mean? Lena, I think, just wants someone to care about her. Yeah. And like we discussed, like, if she becomes a villain, I think it'll, it'll take time and it'll be slowly where... It should take time. If you want to take her down that path, it needs to be where she just slowly starts to pull away, starts to lose faith in people, and just feels betrayed by everyone that she loves. I really, like Zach said, I really, really, really hope that Lena does not become the villain. Oh, I hope she doesn't. I, I love her character arc. I love... The the whole dynamic from the beginning to the end to the what is now of her character. Um, I love her relationship with Kara. I really hope she doesn't get petty when she does find out that she's Supergirl. Which, by the way, why in the world has Kara not said anything to Lena? Maybe she's going to. She referenced Lena as her best friend. Well, what did you think about Kat's reveal? Oh, pfft. I, I knew she knew for the longest time. I mean, that woman is a detective. And, and you know what? That's one thing that um, Zach and I were saying was, you know, the fact is, I think in a point, she plays along just for the, for Kara's sake. You know, just for her. Because maybe it allows her to actually be a little bit more open to Kat about some things in a weird way because she feels like she doesn't have to show that she's Supergirl. Right. She can just be Kara. And so, um, but yeah, it's just kind of that whole Batman thought that Jim Gordon figured out that Bruce Wayne was Batman and he just doesn't want to admit it or tell him that it's just easier to deny it. Right. It was it was a good season. It was a it was a really good season. I think that this was a great ending to this season. Um, I felt like Monel's character was kind of getting bland. He didn't so, get a suit. He didn't get. He really wasn't moving forward. Yeah. So like I said, I felt like he was on the outs. Um, but I I mean I did like his character. I'm not saying I didn't like his character. I just. What about good old John Jones there at the end with Leanne? Oh, well, you knew that was going to happen. No, that was just a matter of time. I love the White Martians dropping in, by the way. That was so cool. Yeah. That was really, really awesome. That was about the time that I had to get up and take care of Sayla, so I, I kind of missed out on that um, after that, I should say. Um, but that was really, really cool. I loved that... Um, you know, there were more white Martians that actually, you know, felt bad about what happened. And that's something that hasn't been explored before. Yeah. They actually felt bad about the genocide. This last episode was awesome. I can't, I don't know how much more to say, honestly. All right, Kryptonians. 
fellow Kryptonians. We will have more podcasts to come this summer, right? Yes, we will. And uh, and we cannot wait for season three to start up and to get back on track with you guys and continue podcasting about our favorite Kryptonian, Miss Kara Zor-El. So remember, guys, look up in the sky.